Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Higher Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting equation n square minus n cube equal to 2. We need to solve this equation for for n, so if you have your answer, your assumption, you can write it in the comments below and then we will check your answer, so it will be really interesting to exchange our information in the end of the video. Okay, so first of all let's subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, on the left side we have the same thing, we have n square minus n cube. And we have minus 2, we subtract it from both from both sides, equal to equal to 0. Right now, this 2, we can write it in, in, in a lot of ways, we can write it as 2 plus 0, but I suggest you to express this 2 as 1 plus 1. Okay, don't ask me why, in a few seconds I will uh, I will explain you why we uh, changed this 2 by, um, by 1 plus 1. So let's do this, instead of this 2, we're going to write uh, 1 plus 1. So as a result, we have n square minus n cube minus, and in parentheses we have 1 plus 1. So instead of this 2 we write 1 plus 1 right here, okay? This is our expression instead of instead of 2. Right now let's open our parentheses real quick. So as a result we have n square minus n cube minus 1 and minus 1 equal to 0. And right now my quick explanation why we choose this expression 1 plus 1 instead of instead of 2 because 1 is a great uh, is a great constant. Uh, what I mean we can express this one for example this one uh, we can express this one as 1 square and we can express this one as 1 cube. Yeah, so we can express this as one cube. And a lot of students might be asking why we express this by, by one square, by one cube. In the beginning, we have n square and n cube. So somehow we can group it, okay? So right now, let's do this. What I'm saying, I'm saying the next thing, n square minus n cube minus, instead of this one, or doesn't matter, this one or this one, of course, this one, let's use n, uh, one square. So minus one square and minus, instead of this one, let's write one cube. Okay, one cube equal to zero. And right now, as I said before, let's see it from like a different angle, from different perspective. We have n square and we can group this n square with this uh, one square. We can group this n cube with this one cube. So right now, let's do this. Let's, let's, try, to, let's try to group it. First of all, in the first parenthesis, we have n square minus 1 square. Okay, really great. Minus, in the second parenthesis, we're going to group our cubes. n cube, we have plus 1 cube, plus 1, 1 cube. And right now, I hope you understand it, why we choose uh, this expression 1 plus 1, because we, we can easily group our squares and our cubes. So I really hope you understand this moment. Uh, what we're going to do next? Right now, let's try to look uh, like from, uh, as well, let's look from a different perspective. We have different of squares. And we have a sum of cubes, but this is our all-known formula. Without any problems, we can remember it. For example, this one, difference of squares, x square minus y square. This is our x plus y, yeah, x plus y, and times x minus y, x minus x minus y. What about this one? This is our sum of two cubes. We, we know this formula as well, because maybe this one is like the most popular, everyone knows about this formula. This one is uh, also a great formula, so you should learn and understand this one. So we have x cube, x cube plus y, x cube plus y cube equal to what do we have x plus y according to a formula and we have x square minus x, yeah, we have x square minus xy of course, minus xy and plus y square. Okay, so I really hope you understand it and right now let's apply this both formula, this one to this expression and this sum of two cubes to this one. Let's do it. First of all, n plus 1 and minus 1, according to this formula, everyone knows about it, or oh, doesn't matter, and minus 1 and plus 1, you can easily swap this parenthesis position, okay? I use with the plus sign, so we have n plus 1 times n minus 1, uh, we expand it in terms of this formula, what about this one? We have sum of two cubes, so right now let's do the same thing with, with that formula mm, as well, so we have minus, we have n plus 1, yeah, we have n plus 1, n plus 1 in the first parenthesis, and in the second one, what do we have? We have n square minus n and plus 1, and plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, of course, maybe some students uh, write uh, this type of brackets right here. This is up to you. I prefer not to uh, not, uh, write in brackets at this point, because when I factor it without any problems, we can get what we, what we, what we have. So we have min n minus 1 and this one, but this is up to you. A correct way, of course, is to use this type of brackets. And right now, n plus 1 right here and n plus 1 right here, so we can easily factor our n plus 1 as a common. So let's do it right now. So we have n plus 1 
And in another parenthesis, as I said before, we can use this type of brackets, but I suggest you to use this one. From here we have n minus 1, I write it, n minus 1. From this expression we have only this expression, so n minus 1. We have minus, of course, this one, n square minus n plus 1. So n square minus n and plus 1, of course, equal to equal to equal to 0. Right now, let's try to look closely what we have. We have a product of two parentheses. This is the first one. We can simplify this more. n plus 1. This is absolutely enough for us. What about this one? We can simplify this. So let's do it. So we have n plus 1 right here on the left side. And in another parentheses, we can write it as uh, this one without parentheses, n minus 1. Minus this one, we need to change all the signs to the opposite one. Minus n square plus n and minus 1, plus n and minus 1, equal to uh, equal to uh, 0. Right now let's try to find a common thing. So first of all we have n and n, so we have 2n, minus 1, minus 1, so we can under, I can underline this, so n and n, we have minus 1, we have minus 1, so we can easily group it, so right now let's, let's do it. So we have n plus 1, and in the second parenthesis we have minus n square. I want to write it on the first position because uh, I see that this is a quadratic equation. Yeah, We have minus n square on the first position. On the second position n plus n plus 2n plus 2n and minus 1 minus 1 equal to minus 2 minus 2 equal to 0. And of course this is up to you, but I suggest you mm, to multiply both sides by minus 1, because then we can easily get rid of this negative sign. Uh, of course you can do this, this is up to you, but uh, uh, for example we can easily continue our solution uh, by writing this parenthesis equal to 0 or this one equal to 0, but if you're interested you can multiply it by minus 1 and then you have like a great expression, because a lot of students don't like this uh, negative sign, they like a classic uh, expression ax square plus bx plus c, but this is up to you. This is my this is my tip, this is my hint, okay? So right now I don't want to multiply it by minus 1, this is up to you. Mm, okay, we need to we need to multiply it a little bit later, yeah? We need to multiply it a little bit later, but let's do it. So n plus 1 equal to 0, so a product of two parentheses equal to 0, and the first parenthesis equal to 0, so n plus 1 equal to 0 from here, n first equal to minus 1, yeah? Or the second parenthesis is equal to 0, or this one, so we have minus n square plus 2n, and minus 2. And as I said before, we really need to multiply it by minus 1, not in the previous step, but right now we, 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 we need to do this. So right now multiplying by minus 1 and we have a classic uh, quadratic equation. Without any problems, we have a really great n square, so without a negative sign in the beginning because we multiply it by minus 1, so n square minus 2n, so we need to change all the signs to the opposite one, and plus 2 equal to 0. Yeah, this is our quadratic equation, yeah? And right now let's solve it. Of course this is up to you, have you prefer solving this type of question. I, I use, uh, for example, method of coefficients, because I want everyone to everyone understand it, so a, a equal to 1, b equal to minus 2, and c equal to equal to 2. From here let's find real quick our discriminant, or you can easily plug in each of these elements into all known spot, into all known formula, minus b plus minus square root of d all over 2a. But I prefer finding real quick discriminant, because there will be like a mathy expressions without a lot of things, but I prefer finding discriminant real quick, b square minus 4ac equal to b square, so minus 2 square, minus 4 times 1 times 2. And from here what do we get? Uh, 4 minus 8 equal to minus 4. And it means that in this part, because it, our discriminant is negative, so from here it means that we have complex mm, complex root. But doesn't matter, let's find it, let's find uh, our complex root. Our formula, so we have n, uh, what do we get? We get n second and third equal to minus b, this formula, yeah, plus minus square root of d all over, all over to a. Let's plug in minus b. Where do we get minus minus 2 plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 4 and all over 2 times 1. Let's simplify this. This is not a hard expression. So we have minus minus, we have plus multiplication, yeah? 2 plus minus square root of minus 4. A lot of students may be thinking this is equal to 2, but square root of 4 and square root of minus 4 are a little bit different expressions. So I suggest you to split it, okay? Inside this parenthesis, inside this not like parentheses, square root, not like square, uh, minus 4, we can write as 4 times minus 1, yeah? You can write it as like that, 
4 times minus 1. You can write it like that, okay? Uh, try to solve this question step by step, and then you will you will understand. And right now, according to a basic um, property, when we have square root of a times b, something like that, you can easily split it like square root of a times square root of b. Yeah, and right now let's split this expression. So as a result, what do we get? 2 plus minus square root of 4 times square root of minus 1 all over 2. And right now, of course, square root of 4 equal to 2, but square root of minus 1 equal to i. This is our imaginary unit, so as a result we have 2 plus minus square root of 4 equal to 2, so 2 times i over over 2. Okay, so I really hope you, you understand. And the last step, we can easily divide our numerator by 2 or, or cancel in each of these coefficients. So as a result, our final answer 1 plus minus plus minus i. These are our two uh, complex root. Okay, so I really hope you understand this part. Right now, let's write our final answer, and in the end, let's check real quick our n first equal to minus 1. Uh, so, for example, I have enough space right here, so let's write our final answer uh, to this question. So, we have n first equal to minus 1, n second equal to 1 plus i, and n third equal to 1 minus i. Okay, these are complex root, this one real, real number root. Okay, so this is my solution to this question, and in the end, let's, for example, check real quick our... Uh, I have enough space right here, so 4, uh, n first equal to minus 1. Let's check real quick our uh, equation, n square minus n cube equal to equal to 2. So n square minus n cube equal to 2. Let's plug in minus 1. What do we have as a result? Minus 1 square minus minus 1 cube equal to equal to 2. And without any problems, we have 1 uh, minus minus 1, because uh, we have an odd power, so it means that we still have like this negative sign. So we have minus minus plus, so 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So everything, everything is great, our root our root is great. We solve this question completely. So this is my solution to this question, real number root to complex root, and of course few hints, few tricks uh, to this question, because you know, uh, I think that it's called like a th fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, because according to this fundamental theorem of algebra, in a few seconds, in instantly, you can easily guess how many roots you will have in, in different equation. In our case, for example, we have n square minus n cube equal to 2. And for example, you see it in your exam, yeah, we have this paper, and in a few seconds you can easily guess how many roots you will have in a question, yeah? Uh, because how can we how can we guess it, okay? Uh, we need to find what is the, we need to find out what is uh, like the highest power in our equation. So we have, for example, we have n square minus n cube equal to 2. Let's scan 2, 3, of course the highest power is 3, so it means that according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, we will have three roots in total. And of course, uh, we can easily see that we have it. Yeah, we have three roots, we solve this question completely. Why this tricks, why this prompt is extremely important? Because sometimes, for example, you have this type of question. For example, you have cubic equation, this type of cubic equation. It doesn't matter, different constant, different variables, but you have a cubic equation, yeah? And you know, sometimes you solve, maybe it happens, you don't know, but uh, sometimes you solve this type of question and you say, okay, I have four roots. And uh, this is like different, uh, this is like a weird thing according to a fundamental theorem of algebra because, because you can't solve this question with the, with the four roots. Because according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, highest power means how many roots we will have in total, okay? Three highest power, so it means three roots in total. We don't know how many real number roots, how many complex roots. Yeah, in our case we have one real, three, two complex, or we can easily have a different thing like uh, two real, one complex. This is, uh, this is, it depends on equation we have, yeah? And uh, of course, maybe we have a different equation like n to the power 5 minus n square equal to 4, something like that, yeah? And we scan what is the highest power, and in this case, the highest power is 5, so it means that we have 5 roots in total. We can easily have 2 real, 3 complex, but fixed root, this is not our case, because according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, it means how many roots we'll have in our question, okay? So this is like a quick trick, a quick, uh, quick uh, hint to you. I really hope you understand it. I really hope you, you, uh, you learn it because this is an instant trick, okay? Uh, you have your equation, and in uh, two seconds you can guess how many roots you will have. Uh, but you can can't guess how many real number roots and complex roots. But you can guess overall like how many roots you have, like uh, in total, yeah, without uh, any. 
without any information about real and complex you can guess how many roots you will have in total once more here's my solution you can easily pause it you can easily see this uh, solution from different perspective and also write your thoughts write your response in the comments below what do you think about this type of question it's also really interesting to exchange information in the comments below so also write your respond and write your thoughts it will be really interesting to exchange information because a lot of a lot of people a lot of like uh, different countries a lot of different approaches and it's also really great to exchange information and it also improves our knowledge yeah because sometimes um, sometimes mistakes sometimes different approach and it, it improves our um, our society yeah so thank you everyone for your time take care of yourself have a great day see you next videos and thank you for watching